there are a ton of characters in Genshin Impact. And you might be one of those people that wants to build at least one of every type just in case you need one. So we're gonna go over the top three characters of every single type and we'll consider four stars, five stars, as well as the most free to play friendly options. So that no matter who you are, you can find a character for any type you're looking for and you can find who, who is the strongest character for every single type. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. I would like to start with a disclaimer and it's a very, very important one. Despite me covering the strongest characters of each type, I do not actually recommend that the majority of Genshin Impact players build out their account based on character strength. I believe that you start with your favorites. What character speaks to you, their individuality, their personality, their design, their play style. Who do you actually have fun? Who do you like in total? And power might be part of it. You might not want to use a really, really weak character because it doesn't feel super good. That's kind of how I feel. But I've come to learn that if you really, really do love a character, you can find a way to make them shine. And that's what my individual character guides are all about. But I do know that a lot of people do want to know what the strongest character is, whether just for their curiosity or because that's actually how they want to make their decision. Or like I already said, they have built out their favorites and now they want to build a strong character from each type to make sure they have a well-rounded account for any elemental check that the Abyss or the Overworld might ever throw at them so let's get into it we have seven elements in the game so let's go in the order of regions starting with animo you're probably not surprised at all to hear this but i definitely think that kazua is the strongest animo character and i don't think it's close i think he's one of the strongest characters in the game his buffing potential his grouping potential and his personal damage and of course being able to very well hold the vv set all combined to make him an extremely potent character and a great addition to any account if i was to pick a strongest four star i would definitely pick sucrose she would also be my pick for the most free to play friendly character because in many situations she is on par with kazua and in a couple situations she even surpasses him she's an incredible character and although i do think overall kazua is better i think sucrose is so good that she carves out a niche all to her own and stands on her own two feet is not just a great free-to-play option but an incredible option overall since this is a top three list i will put faruzan as the third best animal character yes ahead of venti ahead of zhao ahead of wanderer because faruzan is truly who enables wanderer and zhao to actually function you could even argue that she is on the same level as sucrose because of how much she buffs the characters the only caveat is of course her c6 is really what unlocks her full potential as long as you're willing to look past that she easily makes the top three spot and that's who I would and this is who I would say next up is Geo oh boy I don't feel that Geo is in a very good spot right now and I'm hardly the only person that thinks this but I do think it's pretty fair to say that Zhongli is likely the very best Geo character that we have I could see someone making the argument for Goro because he's just such an incredible buffer but I do think Zhongli's universality and help to the casual player as well as the importance for him on teams such as Melt Ganyu and comfort picks for good teams like Zhao, Hu Tao and Yuemiya do make Zhongli worthy of the number one spot I would tend to put Goro at number two however because he's really what enables Mono Geo to function. Without Goro, there really isn't Mono Geo. Ito would be, frankly, a kind of a bad character, and Goro really is what holds it all together. On top of that, he doesn't need constellations to function. He's got an incredible kit at C0. For the third spot, I had some pause. I could very well see you put Ito here, but I'm gonna put Yunjin, mostly because I haven't tried Ito, so I don't quite have the facilities to really comment on how strong I truly think Ito is. I've heard a variety of things i've heard he's very very good and i've heard that he's actually kind of mid i know for sure that yunjin is solid i think that they both land around the same level in terms of power but i also think that yunjin's flexibility her splash ability her ability to work in double geo with zhongli with characters such as yuemiya or ayato or wanderer i think gives her more value so i think that i would put her above ito anyways you could even potentially argue that she goes over goro I could even see someone arguing she goes over Zhongli. I'm not going to lie to you though, I haven't fully tested out these three as much as I would like to. I need to put some more work into Yunjin before I can fully compliment on it. Because mostly, although I have built her to a reasonable degree, most of my knowledge about her is from third parties. Zhongli is really the only one I have personal experience with out of the Geo characters. Moving on to Electro. 
And this is one I've given a lot of thought because if you're a longtime viewer of the channel, you know that it's not close. My favorite character in the game is Raiden. So I don't want to be biased here. I don't want to just say, oh, Raiden's the best. She's my favorite. She's the best. But I actually do think, well, let's say I'm going to give you my top three and then we'll talk about why I think they're ordered the way that they are and how you could order them instead. We have Raiden, we have Kuki, and we have Fischl. I'm quite sure that these are the top three. I really don't see any debate. And I think that in the case of Raiden and Kuki, of course, their prevalence in Hyperbloom teams and how strong Hyperbloom teams are, especially for their low investment. They clap the floor with even high investment teams. It takes specific scenarios for, for anyone else to even reach the ceiling that Hyperbloom teams have because they have very evenly laid out damage. So if you want to, if you can kill a boss fast with Hu Tao, that's where Hu Tao can outpace Hyperbloom teams. There's honestly a very strong argument to be made that Hyperbloom is the strongest team in the game. And I think Raiden is over overall just the better character for hyper bloom but kuki has the added benefit of also consolidating the role of the healer so i could absolutely see that her being very very close right and does have a bit more buffing potential her skill lasts a bit longer so she's more flexible so if you're willing to forego a defensive option or you already have a defensive option on the team then she's always going to be better than kuki but kuki is so good and so comfy because she fulfills that defensive role so i really do think that these are the top two but fischl is so so close behind because aggravate teams are no slouch either i definitely think they're underrated i think people have the perception that aggravate is like a lot worse than hyper bloom but i think because aggravate is so close to hyper bloom in even it's even very good in single target it has better vertical and investment potential if you're going for constellations or five star weapons and it's the better aoe team it has synergy with kazwa it has synergy with sucrose so aggravate really is a very underrated team i still do think it's just below hyper bloom so i think that i give the top three to these right here in terms of free to play friendliness both Fischl and Kuki are quite free to play friendly. Kuki really does want her Constellation 2 to really, really shine because otherwise her ring doesn't last quite long enough. And Fischl, all you need is her C0 and she's an absolutely incredible character. So if you're wanting to build an Electro, any of these are, are great. I think Fischl also gets points for being very splashable. She can work with a lot of characters. If you need, you know, the electro electrical element for something like a Simon, then Fischl is often going to be a character that you can splash in with any other character and make them work. So all of these are S tier characters, in my opinion. Next, we have Dendro and surprise, surprise, Nahida comes out at number one. I don't think that's a shocker. Her off field application, the strength of her Dendro application, her buffing, she just does it all. It's not even close. She's by far and away the best. I think Al Haytham is almost ubiquitously agreed upon as being the next strongest Dendro character. He just does such high personal damage. Amazing with Hyper Bloom teams. He's the ceiling for Hyper Bloom. He is the ceiling for spread. He's just unbelievable character. Arguably an S-tier character as well. Um, yeah, I, I, no complaints with Al Haytham. Now, neither of these are, you know, free to play friendly or four stars. So I don't want to just put in if I had to put my top three for strength I do think Baiju would be the number three because be, because not only does he have great defensive utility decent off-field dendro application that can keep up with aggravate he also has on-field application for hyper bloom so he's really not that much worse than Nahida as an on-fielder for hyper bloom because being a catalyst he does really well it is definitely worse don't don't get me wrong but it allows you to run maybe more offensive options like ride in on your electro slot and that closes the gap for Hyperbloom team. So buys you really good. But I did want to choose a fourth because I, I got to say Dendro is probably one of the most free to play elements, one of the most free to play friendly elements in the game. Because Yao Yao, although I don't think she's as good as Baiju by a long shot, I do think that she is incredibly sufficient. You don't need, just because Baiju is better in every way, doesn't mean that Yao Yao is not good enough in every way. She's good enough with healing. She's good enough with Dendro replication. She's incredible. I think Kirara also makes a strong case for being exactly pretty much as good as, as Yao Yao. I do think Yao Yao a little bit more free to play friendly because not only is she available from the Lantern Knight every year and you can get her for free, at least assuming they're going to continue doing that like they've always done but Kirara kind of really wants her C4 to function as an off-field end replicator now you don't always need that because a lot of aggravate teams where either Yao Yao or Kirara played in or Nilu teams are quick swap team so you can easily swap back into kirara so that you can get reapply that dendro application so the off-field application isn't a huge deal and i think overall these characters are pretty much exactly as good as each other 
But while we're on the subject of free to play, units like Kale, both in Aggravate and in Nilu teams, she's really just not very far behind at all. In some cases, especially if she holds something like Elegy for the end, she can be even better. Tainari is an incredible free to play friendly character because you can get her him from the standard banner. And of course, Dendro Traveler is also an excellent character. So lots of free to play options for Dendro, but I, I do think that these are my top three. Next is Hydro and boy, have I been thinking about this a lot. I know a lot of people are convinced that Sing Cho is just the best character in the game, the best Hydro character. It's not close, it doesn't matter. I really think that there is a case to be made that Yalan is very close, if not just slightly better than Sing Cho because yes, he provides interruption resistance. Yes, he provides damage reduction, but you don't always need that. Oftentimes, either you can forgo a defensive utility completely, or you're already going to be running a defensive utility like Bennett, like Kuki, or whoever it may be. And in those cases, or like Baiju in the case of Sino teams, like Kuki in the case of Alhaitham teams, in certain cases like Hu Tao, it can be tricky to run without a to run her without a defensive utility, and Sing Cho provides enough, especially combined with who Tao's healing and stuff like that. Whereas Yulan, maybe if you're like, if you're really, if you're not playing optimally and you don't ever see one, it can be very hard to go without any form of reduction. But I think that Yulan's higher personal damage and damage amplification makes her a strong contender. And you know what? I'm just going to take the L. I'm going to let you guys hate me. I realize I keep being in front of these guys. You can disagree with me. You can do whatever you want. But I just think that Yulan is a slightly better character. Now, I do have her C1, so is it possible that that's skewing my perception? It is, but I do use her on the Favonius Warbolt the vast, vast majority of the time, so I don't even take advantage of the damage that her C1 gives. But I, I think that they're so close, they're basically the same unit. It's really not a worthwhile debate. Also, Sing Cho, of course, incredible. As soon as you take in any sort of free to play friendliness, like Sing Cho, way more free to play friendly. You can get him from the Lantern right every year, you can get her from the, him from the shop. You can get his C6. Just as long as you're dedicated, you can get his C6. Obviously, I know he has slightly better Hydro application than Yalan. I do think the importance of that is a little bit overblown, but it is objectively better. And his personal damage is extremely high. So I think that they're both basically interchangeable, basically the same character. I don't think that the debate between them is that important, but you know, I'll go for the controversial take and my gut take, which is that Yalan just edges it out. The number three choice was interesting. I paused and thought about, you know, a lot of people think Kakomi, a lot of people like Aito, but I really think that Nilu is the clear choice for the number three. Obviously, I missed the obvious one with Child. A lot of people do think Child is better than Nilu. I don't think so. I think Nilu is better. Um, her AoE is just absolutely ridiculous. She actually has a ton of team flexibility. She works with a ton of five stars and force. As long as you have Nahida, you can really run any other characters alongside free to play friendly options with Barbara, Kirara, Yao Yao, Candice, and in single target, she can utilize Sing Cho or Yalan, an absolutely ridiculous character. The only time she's ever not good is if they're actually Dendro immune enemies, even heavily resistant enemies like the Jade Plume Terra Shroom don't don't even stop her even a little bit. And of course, Cryo Shield, she has a really hard time breaking, but I think that she absolutely deserves this spot. Incredible character, love her to pieces. All right, next is Pyro. Everybody knows who's coming up. Bennett's the number one Pyro character. It's not close, not even much to say here. It's just ridiculous how he's able to both heal and be the best buffer in the game in terms of raw stats that he gives. Just an absolutely busted character. It's so um, it's so absurd. I sure hope that a new five-star unit like Arlecchino or Murata or something like that can come out that can usurp Bennett uh, so we can all have some different options. But as of now, he's just absolutely the uncontested best pyro and he's free to play friendly. He only needs his C1 to be fully functional. He's fully functional at C0, but at C1 is where he basically has it all. Number two, I'm gonna give to Shang Ling. Being an off-field pyro DPS just means that you can build her and not need any other pyro DPS to do pyro damage. Of course, you know, Hu Tao is gonna edge out in single target. Even Yoimiya can do it. And Toma is really good in AOE as well. I do think you could make a case for Toma to be close to Shang Ling, but I do think that her flexibility her ability to work with so many teams, both for AoE with characters like Child or single target with Raiden or Sing Cho or Sucrose. I think she is very good. I think she is joined to the hip with Bennett. I do understand people's issue with that. I do hear some people thinking she's overrated. I don't think she's S tier anymore. Maybe she's just high A tier, but the fact that she does as much damage as an on-fielder from off-field, allowing you to run an on-fielder is just absurd. So she's going to make it. I think the final one 
I can hear you make the case for Linny. I can even see you make a case for Toma. I'm going to give it to Hu Tao because I think her single target damage is just that good. Her flexibility of teams. Check out my guide that I just made for her if you want to hear me delve further in that. But I think if you're looking for another free to play friendly character, then Toma is your man. And if you have a Linny, like the, his damage ceiling is arguably potentially just as high as Hu Tao, very, very close anyways. But I feel like he's a bit more restrictive and the charge attack thing is just a bit more annoying to use, especially against fast attacking and dangerous enemies. And if you want to get away without running Shang Lang on his team, then you have to be pretty highly invested with a weapon or cons or something like that. So I do think Hu Tao is just a little bit better, but I think Linny is a fantastic character. And if you wanted to put him here, I think that's totally fair. And finally, our final element is going to be Cryo. Believe it or not, I actually think that there is some debate for the number one spot. We know for sure that Ayaka is part of that debate, but I think it's a really hot take to say that Shenha, there is an argument to be made for her even above Ayaka. Now, unfortunately, we don't have that many Cryo five-star damage dealers. So it's hard to say who is really winning here is it ayaka who's doing more for the team or is it shenha and if you ask me would i rather have shenha team with rosaria as the main cryo damage dealer or would i rather have ayaka with rosaria it depends in multi-wave content rosaria is going to be better rosaria with shenha is going to be better than ayaka without shenha it's the kind of like when you're doing against bosses or kind of more tanky enemies or chambers that have only one big wave instead of multi-wave because ayaka really struggles as soon as there's multi multi waves that being said ayaka is good for bossing but shenha is part of what makes ayaka so good for bossing that being said i do still think ayaka edges it out i just want to say that there is a debate there and for the third place i do think risley could definitely take it i am going to give it though to rosaria i do think rosaria not only is she the free to play pick for cryo but she also does a ton of damage she's splashable she's flexible she works as a support for ayaka you can use her on her own with freeze you can use her in melt you can use her in melt with shen he. you can use her in melt with kazuha um she's really really good now if we're going strictly strictly power for my top three of course i completely my brain actually blanked on ganyu i just knew i had to pick a four star so i was like the next one might be rosaria so all of you guys who thought i was saying that rosaria is better than ganyu you just got baited <laughs> but we do have to put a free-to-play four-star character in here so rosario is gonna go in the number four spot uh but ganyu is number three her freeze teams are really good her melt teams are really good she even can be that secondary cryo slot for your ayaka you can use her on mono cryo and yes i i do think that ganyu is better than rosaria but rosaria is for sure good enough as a free-to-play option if you just want to build a cryo character for your account let me know who you think makes this list who who was on it that shouldn't be on it who wasn't on it that should have been please consider subscribing it really helps the channel out check out my patreon join our discord if you want to be part of some great discussions and if you don't want to do any of that that's totally fine just watching the video has been more than enough thanks so much bye for now